everybody. Welcome back to Mob Vlog. Adam Flowers here, and uh, good afternoon. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to have Red Wimet with us on the show, and Red is going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a few people, Tony Spilatro, Frank the German Schweiss, uh, and, uh, and a few others, Marilyn Monroe, JFK. Uh, should be a pretty darn interesting evening. Now, uh, uh, Cindy, Cindy Workman is live with us today. Cindy, I made you a moderator today. Um, Allie's not with us today. She's out gallivanting around town. So, um, so yeah, so I made a couple of you guys moderators. Uh, and Sean Pender, we're going to, I think I already did. Yeah, I made you a moderator. So if you guys could watch the comments with me, I'd appreciate that. All right. So let's get, the comments. Let's, yeah, let's get this thing going today. And uh, everybody, welcome back. Mob Vlog. Hey, Red. So welcome back. Thank you, Adam. It's good to uh, good to see you today. Uh, last night was an interesting conversation that we had, and that interesting conversation sparked off me sitting there for an hour coloring a thumbnail for this video while I listened to a couple of Red's stories about this. Now, just for those of you who don't know, um, I I my interest and fascination in the mob started around the age of 18 even though I'm from the south side of Chicago I wasn't really around it in that sense but uh my fascination began when I learned that the movie Casino was a true story and that stuff all took place in Chicago and the cornfield was not far from where I lived and uh so it, it was fascinating to me and then when I moved to Vegas and became a tour guide I really got interested and then when we started making videos Frank and I and I started hearing all of his stories then I really got pulled in so there are some of you that have studied this read more books no more than i do so feel free to join in in the uh in the comments and uh you know ask a question if you want uh you know whatever you want to you know whatever you guys wanted to do jump in though this is live right now it's wednesday it's two o'clock and let's jump right into this red uh so tell uh for those of you who don't know who red is just tell a real quick background about yourself uh, my background, I was an associate of the mob, uh, Grand Avenue crew. Uh, basically, it started like 1968. I became an FBI mole in October of 1971. And this put you in, in contact with a lot of these? Uh, I was in contact with them anyway. That's right. It was all the bosses of Marshall Cofano, um, Jimmy Cattura, um, Joe Lombardo, Laporte out on the south side with Kurt Hansen. It started out at the low level and worked its way up. I was a bartender in B-Girl places. As a matter of fact, I got a kick out of that. Last night we were talking, I saw a picture of the Crystal Pistol. I used to have barter. <laughs> At B girl joints, for those of you that may not have been around when there were B girl B girl joints, they were kind of like strip clubs. They were strip clubs, except the girls used to hustle drinks. That's all. Right. So being in that area and being around these guys, you had a lot of contact with Frank Schweiss. And okay. how did you how did you tell us how that happened? How did you come to know him? Well, I knew Frank. I met Frank uh, at, at American Bonding. Actually, uh, Phil Alderisha was there. A lot of people were there, but they didn't really talk to me then when I first met them. Uh, later on, as I went along, I guess Marshall Cofano being seen with him, uh, he spent a lot of time with me. We used to go to the Oak, Oak Tree Restaurant, Russian Oak, and have breakfast and stuff like that. So people became more open with me about Joey Lombardo became very open with me about things. Um, it just, it progressed. Are you asked me a question? Why would these guys trust you to talk to you? Mm -hmm. And I really asked that question many times myself. I said, why did they open up and say all these things? 
I really don't know. But one trusted the other one. And here's a point that's good to bring out. When Joey was getting ready to go to prison, um, he had to go away for, I think it was uh, him and Alan Dorfman. They, they were some scam that they were doing on, on something they got caught on. I forget the name of the operation now. I think it was Pendorf. But <clears throat> at any rate, uh, we were all gathered together at Jimmy Cozo's place. We called it the spot. And everybody was there. I mean, Vince Solano was there. A lot of people were there that weren't even part of the Grand Avenue crew. Solano was part, you know, the Rush Street crew, that, that area. But a lot of people were there, and Joey's barking out orders. But at that time, Joey was the street boss. He became the street boss. That famous uh, Family Secrets picture where he's, uh, he's wearing a suit and everybody else is just casual. That was his, he was being dubbed the street boss to take care of things when nobody else was around. Well, when he was going away, um, I was sitting, standing next to him. And um, he was standing there and he said, uh, he pointed toward twice and Frank twice. And he said, hey, this kid needs anything for you while I'm gone. Take care of it. Whatever it is, take care of it. And Schweiss and I used to meet very often after that. Very, very often. Okay. So so uh, you then went to the feds and you said that you could get some information for them, enough for him to for them to arrest him. No, that was way back in 1971 that I was just feeding them information, but it was under a false name a code name and everything. But then in 19, I think it was June of 1986, he was sitting there telling me how he beat Tony to death and, and the people that were there, some of the people were there. And I don't know if he was looking for a reaction out of me because I usually chuckle. You know, I usually chuckle when I talk. Mm -hmm. And um, I just remained normal, went through it after he left. Uh, I did not call the FBI, I called the U.S. Attorney's Office, went over the FBI's head and said, I want a wire set up in my home. And they asked me why, and I told them why. And it was January of 1987 that we started the wires. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, if you're just coming in, hit the like button, smash it, get this video going out there, guys. Um, Please hit the like. Okay, so Red, the uh, your involvement with Frank uh, Schweiss. T tell us a little bit about Frank and where who his boss was and the hierarchy hierarchy there. Frank really started out as a burglar, uh, just like everybody else did, I guess. You know, most of the people, except he excelled in uh, killing people. He was good at it. Very good. He never got caught. <laughs> he went to the grave without getting caught. But um, his mentor was Milwaukee Phil. As also, Tony Spalaccio's mentor was Milwaukee Phil. So they reported to Milwaukee Phil. And they were part of the Grand Avenue crew. That was all part of it. Uh, Phil was the boss of the Grand Avenue crew until he was like an intern boss for a short period, like two years. And then he went to prison. And Joey took over the Grand Avenue, Joey Lombardo. All right. So I, I'm just thinking out loud here. But at any point when you, over these these years of dealing with these guys and having your house wired with microphones everywhere, recorders everywhere, did you ever have a close call? I mean, did anything like like something fall out of a wall or, you know what I mean, something that, that you could have One gotten? time. One time, um, the agent that was working with me at the time, my control agent, was Scott Jennings. And Scott, I was there was no tech to set up the government's equipment. And so he said, oh, I know how to do it. And he's doing this. He didn't know what he was doing. I had a little electronic background experience. And I had a bank of switches on the wall as you come up the stairs. The one switch was just a dummy switch that turned on the tape recorder. Well, there was a fan, a ceiling fan in the room, and it buzzed. It gave feedback. 
Oh, no. And Schweiss says, what the hell is that? And I said, I don't know. It must be something in the electricity. And I went over and clicked it off. I clicked the fan off, but not the recorder. And we kind of got a dim recording that day. I don't know why, but it did. But it still came out. The audio, and you could see it was him. I was a little close that time. Another time I did have a close call, too, because on the back of the recliner or the chair you're sitting, it was a lazy boy. There was a um, two microphones. And uh, this was Scott Jennings' idea to put a backup underneath it, but the, the cords went up through the, the chair. And Frank was leaning back like this, and he was, he was talking, and all of a sudden, one of the microphones fell down the side. And I could see it, but he didn't notice it. And so I diverted his attention. I had a cigarette lighter that was made like a pistol. All you do is push the top of it and you use light. So I diverted his attention, picked up the cigarette lighter off the coffee table and lit the lighter. He was scared when I picked up the pistol. He said, what are you doing? And I lit it. He said, oh, he started laughing. He got up, went to the bathroom. When he got up, went to the bathroom, I ripped that thing out. <laughs> so two, two close calls then. Yes. Okay. Out of the, uh, two close calls out of, uh, that was during the recordings. Uh, I would say two close calls out of maybe three years. Hmm. Well, that's not too bad. No. Yeah. Not considering you used to stop by like once a week or better. Right. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's get into the meat of this thing. Marilyn Monroe. So Marilyn Monroe, there's many, many, many theories as to what took place. There is no, uh, there, it's never been solved. There's no answer. There's nothing's been proven, okay? But this Secret theory. Secret died when Frank died. As far as any concrete proof, it died when he died because there's nobody left now. So, uh, so when you told me this last night, I went, "This is this is amazing." I like this is a great theory. So, um, so let me pull this uh, screen up for us, so everybody else can see. And I've this. told the story before. I just didn't tell it to you. <laughs> well, wait, and and uh, this was on ABC Seven. This was all actually reported on on ABC Seven. So, conspiracy theory, whatever, it made it made the mainstream media. So, uh, let's take a look here. Deepest family secrets. So, the way it goes, well, you you tell it, Red. I I enjoy listening to to you tell it. Well, this is the IT reported it. Uh, you know, I I think people should read it. Read this actual. It's online. You can read it right here. But basically, we were talking, Frank and I were talking about uh, Eugenia, Pop, Eugenia Pappas. And uh, he kind of gazed off, you know, like he wasn't really, he was living in his memory or something like that. But um, at the end of the story, he told me, you know, she, he put her in the river and the car was crunched. And... Uh, at some uh, salvage yard, and that uh, uh, basically that his the person he was arrested and interrogated by was Richard Kane, and mm -hmm. he knocked him off on the short list and said, "No, it wasn't him. He didn't do it." And it was on the Eugenia Pappas. Now the reason Eugenia was actually murdered was because she was questioning Frank about how he'd been out of town for a while. And somehow it got back to Phil, and Phil said, it's kind of like when um, uh, Joey Lombardo told Frank, or, or told Splacho, clean your house. He went and told him to take care of it. And that's the story he told me. Okay, so that's, that's why, what... That's why I killed Eugenia Pappas. So Eugenia Pappas is a, a 18 year old girl that Frank gorgeous gorgeous 18 year old mechanic Greek girl from Greek town Frank's like 32 she's 18 they start dating in, in this article too by the way it states that her sister said stay away from them because when you die they just step over your body I think is the exact quote in here um because well let me go back up to the top here 
uh yeah so anyway she said something like that to her and she she was dating her um that was it my sister came to see me eight days before she was murdered and i said please don't be involved with anyone like this because when you die they just step over your body so her sister had a uh knowledge of what these guys were like and didn't want her younger sister uh you know seeing her anyway eugene eugenia pappas was uh last seen a week before Christmas, 1962. She disappeared, her family were, looked for her. Uh, it was, her body was found by a tugboat captain in the, uh, in the Chicago River. So she was- And her, her relatives, one of her relatives was a police officer. Mm -hmm. So all the time that she was missing, they were getting reports. They'd report to the family, oh, we saw her here, we saw her there. And then That's all right. of a sudden, I read you know, that. She was trying to find out. But then all of a sudden, bang, her body pops up in the river. And she's and killed. And he was afraid to go against the outfit. And she was killed, it was determined, by a bullet to the heart, pierced she her heart. She was shot dead, dead set but in the chest they from, said from approximately two feet away in the passenger seat of the car. Oh. Um, yeah, see, here, they mentioned you right here. In 1989, Schweiss was convicted of shaking down porno store owners. You were one of them. And was recorded on an FBI tape boasting he was the boss and no one else. So, so yeah, this is, and there was one, I read one other thing. They said that it was determined that she was shot while sitting in a car. Yeah, it was close range. Was, very right. close range. And then after that, which was a brand new car, that Frank Schweiss had. He gets eight months old. That car was eight months old. Eight month old car. So it's a probably a 1962 V whatever model of whatever. They get find the look for the car, and the car's been crushed, put into a car crusher. It's now a cube being sent off to the mill to be melted down, right? They never found the physical car. All they did was trace the title. They traced the title and found out they it was never crushed. actually found the physical car. They went to the junkyard where it was crushed or the title was changed. They never actually located the car itself. Wow. But wow. don't forget, Richard Kane was heading up this investigation. Makes sense. For those of you that don't know, Richard Kane was a dirty cop in Chicago. And also a close friend of St. Giancana. Mm -hmm. And got killed in a flower shop, I believe. Um, no, it was uh, Rosie's Grill. Oh, a sandwich Grand shop. Avenue. Now it's a flower shop. Yeah. I think. I, I know we went past the site of where Richard Kane was killed uh, when we when we went it to was Chicago. It a long over. time. Right. Uh, so so that's the that's the theory, and the theory goes is that after, um, well, that she was killed because. She found out about Marilyn Monroe because he was bragging to her that he went to California. She put two and two together. Marilyn Monroe was killed. And then he told uh, Milwaukee Phil she put it together and he ordered the hit and said she has to go, right? You know, I don't know if he was bragging. He used the word bragging. Okay. But I think he talked to her about it, trying to say how important it was mm -hmm. and not to talk about it. But she was 18 years old and yeah. she did talk about it. Right. And when the word got back to Phil, Milwaukee Phil, mm -hmm. Phil Mauricio, he turned around and said, that's it. She's got to go. Got it. So so how did well, they kill him? Frank was in love with her anyway. I think she was just uh, she was a good looking gal. She really was. Huh. 18 years old. He was what, 31, 32? Uh, he was 31, I believe, when she was 18, right? Yeah, and he's throwing around hundred dollar bills like they're you know <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Do you know? Did Frank? Uh, did Frank Schweiss have any siblings, or was he an only child? You know, I don't know. I I, I talked to one of his cousins. Um, his name is Don Schweiss. He was a cop, and he said it was very difficult for him being a cop to have the Schweiss name, but mm -hmm. he said as a child, his parents would never tell him anything about Frank. And I had many conversations with him on Facebook and a couple by telephone. 
he never mentioned that. He just, uh, I don't think he was an only child, but there's somebody that posted something up. I was looking his name up and somebody posted up and it says Schw Frank Schweiss's family. And it shows him with another, other kids and whatever. But according to his cousin, Don Schweiss, um, who's alive and kicking right now, um, he, he left home like when he was 12 years old. He was out on the street. He lost his mother. His mother passed away. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Sean Pender's asking if she was an only child. I don't know if she was. Becca? Um, no, because Becca had a sister. We know that because her sister oh, visited her. Who was an only child? So Eugene Becky Pappas was not an only child. Because in that article we just read her. No, sister's... she was definitely not an only right. child. That was her sister, and she had a brother also. Okay. And Mar Marilyn Monroe. I don't know. Parents relatives. I never looked at it. I don't she know. She had a half sister, Sean, if you're asking if Marilyn Monroe. I don't see any comments here. Oh, I can't see any comments. Click on your comments in the upper right corner on your screen. Oh, I got to turn it on, right? Yeah, you got to turn those on, and then you'll be <laughs> oh, able to see Oh, okay, it. there they are. <laughs> got it? Cool. Um, uh, does Red know Wayne Bach? Yes. And Frank were allegedly partners, yeah? Yes, they, I knew. I saw uh, when they were clocking Steve Tushin, I used to see Wayne Bach was huge. I mean, he, he was a huge guy. Mm -hmm. But they were in one of Frank's cars, or one that he used, and the whole car was listing to one side on Frank's, on, on Bach's side, Wayne Bach's side. But he mm -hmm. was a huge man. He used to be a center for uh, the Chicago Cardinals. And he lived out in... Uh, at that time, when I knew him, he was out in Willow Springs hmm. on the south side. So uh, th th this this is uh, George. Um, in 85, L.A. Police Chief Darrell F. Gates said about Marilyn Monroe's death, quote, it was a very straight suicide. Do you think that the mafia got to Gates to go the suicide way even decade la decades later? No, I think politics did. I think it was political. Yeah. I think it was through a senator or a state senator or something like that. But he had to go along with whatever was supposed to. For many years, it said barbiturates. There are barbiturates in her stomach. Huh. And then there was a second uh, autopsy where what I was told was yeah. actually found. And it was chloral hydrate. Chloral hydrate actually killed her. There was undissolved pills, barbiturates, nebutal, whatever, in her system, in her stomach, but they were undigested. They never went into her bloodstream. What killed her was the chloral hydrate. Mm, okay. And how did they get that in her? I was told by Frank that they used a suppository, a chloral hydrate suppository. It left no needle marks on the skin. It wasn't digested, and nobody checked it. And it's huh. gone. It evaporated. It's gone. All right. Now, this is a little off the beaten path, but this, this has been in the comments since the beginning, since we started. There's been multiple people that have commented on this. Cindy Workman started it off saying that... Uh, that uh, she, actually John O started it off saying that he read that Marilyn Monroe's hygiene was sorely lacking. And then Cindy said that it, she heard it was pretty rank as well. And there's been a few more comments about this. Did you ever hear anything? I've never heard anything like I've that. I've never heard anything her. like that, but I, I, I tend not to believe it because she really slept around with some, I mean, Sam Giacana slept with her. She slept with the Kennedys. Yeah. I mean, she couldn't have been a dog. That's how you would think so, right? But it seems like a lot of she people... She had an affair with JFK, and she had an affair with Bobby, and she also had an affair with Peter Lawford. Huh. And many others. And some people would say it cast the thousands. <laughs> yeah. 
Tony Montana said you heard the doctor purposely gave her too much oxygen to shut her up. Saw it in a TV documentary. And Mickey Griggs heard that somebody gave her a hot shot. And, of course, John O. had to chime in that uh, Marilyn wasn't famous for her poor hygiene. Or she was famous <laughs> for her poor hygiene. Again, back to this poor hygiene of Marilyn Monroe. I mean, She used to do something with ice. She'd put ice on her, I mean, skin and everything. She wanted everything perfect on her. Huh. Um, real quick, John Allen, I'm glad that you did enjoy that uh, recipe. It's a killer recipe. So I'm glad that you, uh, you tried it out and, and uh, did it. So, yeah, stoner guitarists, they say you can keep a secret between three when two are gone and dead. Uh, but a dead man snitch and a, a, ta- a tail tells, and you be like voodoo dolls and one strike in a box like a matchstick. <laughs> That's quite a cliche. I like that one. <laughs> sure is. American Gangster says it was a hot shot of lead. Hot shot of lead that went. No into- way. No, no way. Not, not happened. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did Gianni Russo know this? Because I believe Gianni knows, would know because Gianni slept with Marilyn Monroe. So he'd I know if she had good her. hygiene. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, he said he slept with her. Yeah. That's what I mean. When he there was 16. Go. Yeah, when he was 16. So, you know, he he would know. Yeah, he would know. Unless she got sloppy over the years. <laughs> true. Did you know any guys from Detroit? No. Secular human wants to know. Now he's from he's from Michigan, so uh yeah. Anyhow, I guess I kinda stick to our own crew. Mm-hmm. Grand and Ogden crew. Yeah. I knew a little bit about, you know, the South Side, Jimmy Katura. Mm-hmm. I knew a little bit about Lake County from Louis Eboli, um, the Petit brothers, Joey and Larry Petit, people right. like that. But because um, they met regularly over bias. Gotcha. By Jimmy Cozos. So, uh, Rich Casico, you just got here, and uh, you, you want to know who killed Marilyn. We kind of already got through what, what the story was that we were on about it, uh, and, but I will throw a link. Um, let me take a look here. Yes, I'm going to throw this link up for you guys, and this is basically the story that we're talking about, and you can... Is that right? Uh, it's not as much as the who, it's the why. Right. Yeah, it's why. Well, that's true. Why is really the important part. Did that link go up? There you go, guys. The link is up there. You can click on it in the description and it'll take you to that uh, paper. Yes, God bless America. Marilyn was going to go public with everything. That's true. So she was going to go public with everything, and that's probably one of the reasons that they, um, one of the reasons that they did her in, right? I mean, if everybody uh, you know, had her phone wiretapped, yeah, exactly. The CIA had her phone wiretapped. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The Secret Service had it wiretapped because of the Ken- Kennedy family. The FBI had it wiretapped because of her association with Sam Giancana. Everybody had it tapped. All these people had it tapped, and only one guy. In those days, they didn't have electronic devices. They used live wires. Mm -hmm. So what they did in 1962 was they ran these wires. Well, in order to do it, they only used one person from the telephone company to actually come in and do it. Okay. So he knew all the wires. He knew all the wires that were in there. So everybody had her wired, and she calls her publicist and says, I want to hold a press conference. I'm going to blow those Kennedys out of the water. Jack Kennedy is not taking my phone calls. Bobby Kennedy has been, I've been sleeping with him. And she said, I've had it. I'm going to embarrass the whole Kennedy family. And I think this was talked about in Double Cross, the book Double Cross by Giancana and somebody else. Right. That is discussed in Double Cross. Yes. That was one of the first books that when, when I, uh, when I started doing the Vegas mob tour as a guide back in 06, uh, that was the, like one of the first books that Robert Allen, the producer, handed me. Got to read this. <laughs> oh, I guess so. I guess so. Time goes by fast. It really does. It goes by quickly. So her home was heavily bugged all that time, but those recordings disappeared after the man who had them died. 
Actually, each agency had a, re a copy of the recording uh -huh. because they recorded it. Got and that's how, that's how it was done. Uh, uh, according to Frank Schweiss, Johnny Roselli told Giancana, Giancana told Milwaukee Phil, and Milwaukee Phil dispatched Tony Spalaccio and Frank Schweiss to do the murder. Wow. So going back in time in 1962, I would say that's his first bones for Tony. Yeah. Pro probably. At that time, though, Frank was arrested more than his age, <laughs> more times than his age. It's in that <laughs> news article. And I thought Tony's bones were made over the Eminem murders. I thought it was Manny Scar. <sighs> okay. We'll have to look up dates of all of these and figure out which one was. They were all first. in 62. They were all in 62. Wow. Okay. So we we'll have to look that up, though. I'm interested in, in knowing that. Evan and Jeff, were in 62. They were in the 70s. Okay. Philip Ross. Hey, guys, hit the like button. Get this uh, video out there. Smash it. Smash the like button. Philip Ross, did JFK ask Giancana to kill her? I think it was JFK that went to no, Giancana. No. I, I think he was, as a president of the United States, I think he had handlers that just said, we better report this to somebody else. The decision was probably made by intelligence mm -hmm. that we can't let all this out. It's going to destroy America. Okay. God bless America. RFK. Peter Lawford and a third person was pulled over for speeding near her house that night. A doctor. They had a doctor with them. And, and they were pulled over for speeding. They're, they're on their way to Lawford's place. Okay. Um, That's a fact. Let me throw another link in here, too, because you guys may be interested in this uh, bit of information. But I also run another channel called... You must meet, and on that channel, um, I only have one interview, but the interviewee was a person who was best friends with Peter Lawford. Wow. And heard some of the stuff about the JFK and why it all went down. Um, and let me grab that link. Joe There's... Kennedy, never, even though he was married to uh, Joe Kennedy's daughter? Uh-huh. He never talked to him after this happened, ever. Never? No. Okay, guys, in there, I just threw the link up down there. If you guys want to check that out after the video or whatnot, go through. I'll he had a stroke shortly after that. Who did? Joe Kennedy. Joe Kennedy did, okay. Um, hmm. So that's pretty damn interesting. And in this other video, that link that I just put, uh, he talks about not just the Kennedy thing, but he um, he gets into, let me see, let's see here. Yeah, see, he talks about celebrities like Peter Lawford. He knew Lucille Ball, Rosemary Clooney, Ray, uh, all these people, uh, even Tiny Tim, you know, tiptoe through the tulips guy. Uh, it's an interesting interview. It's toward the end of the interviews when we talk about the, the JFK Marilyn Monroe, all that connection. So, uh, anyway, it was, it's it's kind of interesting because he knew Lawford. Anyway, uh, so uh, do, 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 that sounds sorry. That's suspicious about the those guys getting pulled over. Maybe the doctor dozed her up. Marilyn What's Gaines really Street. suspicious is if you read the report, the ambulance came from Santa Monica. She lived in Brentwood. An hour and 45 minutes, they had a roadblock. They wouldn't mm -hmm. let anybody go through to her house because they wanted to clean things up. They were looking for the diaries. They admit that. Right. They were looking for the diaries because she kept a diary on everything. But there was no diaries ever found. Okay, now, Milo George... did a real good job in his book, Milo Spilegro. What's the name of it? The Crip 33. Oh, yeah, that's right. Crypt 33. I'm going to download that and read through it. Um, it sounds like a pretty interesting, pretty interesting read. Uh, George, John Minor, investigator of Marilyn Monroe's death, quote, every body specimen 
disappeared overnight, liver, kidneys, and stomach, and its contents, which would have proven definitely she did not kill herself. That's correct. So all of that just disappeared. The mortician did it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But Joe DiMaggio had her body exhumed and mm -hmm. had a second autopsy done, and he found the chloral hydrate in her blood in the tissue. It doesn't go out of the tissue. Wow. See, that's uh, it's the little things that get you caught. In case you ah. haven't seen that movie yet, <laughs> it's called It's the Little Things. It's the new Denzel Washington movie. All right, I just had to quote that. Uh, real quick, Brett, uh, it's good to see you. Vegas yeah, is Brett. still closed. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's not open. Not yet. Not yet. But Texas <laughs> is. Missouri is. Florida has been. Mississippi is. So. Texas. Anyway. Went, yeah. Texas went wide open yesterday. <clears throat> I think that Vegas is going to start reopening pretty soon. It's. I, I have a feeling it will because everybody's, if it's opening in other states, they're going to want, they're, they're like, well, let's go do things. Let's go out finally. And so we'll see. Two Iron, love the blog. Uh, does Red know what house Tony and Mike were killed in? Nick Calabrese said he couldn't remember the house. I think that's BS. I have also heard it was Ebeli's house, Louis Ebeli's. I was told that it was Ebeli's house. Uh, several people, his old house, because he had moved to Oak Brook. Mm -hmm. He was living in Oak Brook, but that was his old house in Bensonville. I don't know who lived in it or owned it at the time, but that was the house where it actually took place. Interesting. Um, Carl Foster, yes. Norma Jean Baker, that was her real name. And wasn't she from Illinois? Southern yes, Illinois? she was. She, she was, was the first centerfold in Playboy magazine, the first issue. And, hey, if Red's saying something about porn, I'd believe him. <laughs> Red nose porn. <laughs> that that was had to my time. <laughs> the, the other day we were talking. The other day we were talking. Can I share that story about the what you did all day in the morning and through yeah, the afternoon? Yeah. When you, you were talking on the phone about this, and he said, "You know, I had to look at every single piece of material, of footage, every frame, every video, everything." He said, "I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be eating cereal with porn rolling on the TV, switching out the tapes all day long, watching it in the background all the time." And magazines. Unbelievable. But tell uh, them why. Well, because if anything illegal, you know, something that should be illegal, right? Be put in animals you know, or children. There you go. He would get, uh, yeah, oh, he'd have to get big trouble, big trouble, right? <laughs> Anyhow, um, uh, t -t 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 wow, um, I don't know what this means. God bless America. Her maid tried to tell the truth, but she was threatened. Marilyn yes, Monroe's she was. maid. Okay. Well, she's deceased now, too. Well, yeah. Well, what They're happened? Anybody who would have known or could have known isn't going to be around. So. No. Okay. Uh, Mickey Griggs. Yeah, today's DNA could solve it. <laughs> LOL. John O. Joe was mean enough to do it. Had his daughter lobotomized and sent away. Yes, he did. His one really? daughter. His one daughter was uh, uh, retarded and difficult to deal with. Mm -hmm. And they, in the old days, when they lobotomized, they took an ice pick and they put it through the eye, and just the frontal lobe was just scrambled eggs when they got done with it. But he did that to his uh, own daughter. God, that's 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 crazy. Um, and the Kennedys had a lot of kids. <laughs> That's crazy. That's insane. Um, hi, Grace. Uh, uh, good to see you here. Um, I, <laughs> Tony Montana said, I bet Red hated that job. <laughs> LOL. I didn't like it. I hated it. You're right, <laughs> Tony Montana. It's yeah, you know, I worked I worked in a I don't think I've said it before. I worked in a strip club for four years as a DJ. <laughs> And the first, when I got that job, I was 21 years old. It was at a place in Harvey, Illinois called Skybox. And I 
thought I won the lottery when I got that job. I was like, oh, I get to sit here and play music all day and look at naked girls. Like, this is, can't get any better than that. It gets boring after a while. There's only so many bodies you can look at. And that's it. Two, two weeks in. Two weeks in. And I was like, this is, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm, I'm like, I, I can't look anymore. It's not even, I'm, let me get something else to, I'd watch little movies and practice card tricks. And <laughs> she was up in the booth. So try doing it, try doing it for 18 years. No, 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 no. Every no. day, seven days a week. No, Sorry. no, no. That's Weekends, too, everything. That's too much. That's way too much. Um, it was hectic. It was hectic. Sean Pender, this skybox is now closed. Yeah, the guy who was running it, the guy who was running it got nailed for all kinds of, uh, it was like, he, he had like $3 million or something in his parents' basement stuffed in a in, <laughs> in a safe, and they found it. You know, he was skimming off of the, off of the joint. So, uh, oh my God, that guy's crazier than Mad Sam. His own daughter talking about the lobotomy. Yes, Joe Kennedy. Yeah, that is, that is. That was JFK's sister and Robert Kennedy's sister. John Kennedy and Robert Kennedy's sister was lobotomized by Joe Kennedy. Well, he had a doctor do it. Hey, J.W., one of Marilyn Monroe's first movie was The Asphalt Jungle. Good yes. flick with young that Marilyn the as the bonus. Movie. It was the first? I think it was. Ask him. What's his name? Uh, J.W. J.W. Yeah. Uh, do you know uh, Nick Macy saying uh, Willie Messino slept with her? I'm thinking he's talking about uh, Marilyn Monroe. I don't know that to be a fact. Uh there was rumors that she slept with everybody. So, yeah, it's like a Virginia Hill, right? She got passed <laughs> around a lot. Yeah, the Virginia Hill. Holy cow! I wish yeah, I could find that. Up. I wish I could find that clip from the Kefauver hearing, Senator Kefauver, when they had her on the stand, and they're like, "And where did this money come from?" And she's like, "Well, it came from here." And then, "Where did this money come from?" It came from here, and Mr. Capone gave it to me, and Mr. Giancana gave it to me, and all. And they said, and why did they give you that money? <laughs> and on live oh, TV, <laughs> yeah, no, on live TV, she said, and I'll clean it up for YouTube. She said, I give the best oral sex in Hollywood. But she said it in the rawest, most, you know, way that you can say it. And uh, and they pulled her off of the stand so fast they didn't know what the hell was going to come out of her mouth next. They knew what went into it, but they didn't know what was going to come out, you know. And that was on live television back th in those days. I mean, people were watching things live. So hit the like button, guys, if you're just coming in here. Hit the like button. We're going to be wrapping this up here in a few minutes. Uh, J Jimmy's in Chicago is still open. I did go into that place a few times uh, on my way home from another place in the Heights that I worked on Route 30 called Club 390. So uh, anyhow, uh, the Kennedys are cursed. Brett, you are correct. Yes, the Kennedys are cursed. Even they the, made uh, their own curse. They yes. made their own curse. Well, you know, if you go back to the whole beginning of the thing, how, um, you know, I, I mean, it was the Chicago machine that got him elected. For whatever reason that year they needed illinois that was the big state and they the had the unions they had and, west virginia they had right. the coal miners unions they had all these illiterate people come out to vote uh-huh wow and yes. it was by a very mind a real small margin very right. small margin which you and i did a video about that but it didn't get really shown no, um, <laughs> uh, I think they call it a, a, a shadow banning or something. But anyway, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty certain that if you say certain things, that's what happens. So, oh, my God, Nick Macy, Gianni Russo catered the Last Supper. I'll bet you're right. I, bet you. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I you know what? And we'll always make fun of that guy on this channel after what he said about Frank after Frank passed, we're going to laugh at his ass at Gianni Russo as much as we possibly can. Yeah, Nick Macy. Gianni also parted the Red Sea. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, he was Johnny, there. Gianni, you and I have the same opinion as the guy. He's a dope. 
Nick, yeah, Nick, Nick, yeah. Johnny Russo did the vaccine for COVID. Uh, yeah, he invented it. I bet you he did. Isn't that something? We shouldn't say that on here anyway. Yeah, or in State Street. I thought it was on, on Route 30. Is my, my memory off a little bit? Um, it was on I, State Do I cook that deep dish pizza? I do sometimes, but right now, I'd be honest, I'm like, I'm like, heavy right now i gotta lose some damn i can't make pizzas I'm right now. Weight, you're not. <laughs> I, I told red all about uh keto and what keto is and he started doing it he's losing all kinds of weight no i think what i'm gonna do the joker is i think i'm gonna make a video about how to make a cauliflower crust pizza that's what i've been doing oh, lately and those are good. great yeah make them from scratch and they're they're killer everything uh, with almond flour <laughs> everything's made with yeah, almond, almond flour. flour uh will guajardo Will Guajardo, um, favorite Chicago pizza spot, Adam Red. Well, mine was, um, I've got to say that I, I liked Pizzeria Uno. I worked at, at it in Maryville, Indiana, doing magic back in the day. Uh, so, so I liked Pizzeria Uno. I also liked the place in Calumet City called Jimmy's. Uh, and I would say in Chicago, probably Giordano's, but I might be biased to them because now there's a couple of them out here in Vegas. So what about you, Red? Back in the day, my favorite place was Uno's. Uno's Pizza. Oh, it was, yeah. It was, and then they came out with Uno's 2, right. which was the second one. Yeah. But normally, if I was ordering a pizza at home I wanted to deliver, it was father and son. Okay. But that was back in the 70s and 80s. Things were different when, you know, you change it. You got a name on something, but different people are actually making the product. So it, it changed over a period of years. But Uno's, they had the best. Hmm. Deep dish. I think they were the original deep dish pizza in Chicago. Uno's. I, I don't know, but I'll tell you, it's... I love Chicago pizza. And you guys, you guys are all over the place. Brett says he likes Lou Malnati's. David Grimp says that, whoops, that's not David Grimp. Um, David Grimp says uh, Armand's Pizza. Of course, uh, Brett, Lou Malnita's. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, there's a lot Brett, of good you're pizza. you're stuck out the sticks out there. What do you got out there? Well, Brett likes Joe Joe's Pizza in Wheeling, Illinois. Yeah, we yes. in Wheeling. It's like the only pizza place out there. I right? used to get that when I was a kid, Joe. Uh, Aurelio's. Aurelio's. I like the Aurelio's. That's okay. Oh, Their sauce was a little, like, sweet or something for me. I wasn't fond of that. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. It's um, it's good. Okay, so let's see here. Um no um two iron no i just uh i just don't bring that uh that subject up that's all so uh palermo's on 63rd street mike alexander thought that he liked that father and son is what my family ordered robert niesler it was very good mm -hmm. it was very good and they cut it in squares instead of the pie shaped it was all cut in squares oh yeah yeah, so that's it up, no, it was a square. It's and a they circular put, pizza, and they cut it like this. That's how you, it's Chicago. Chicago that's how we style. do it. Yeah, and then you then you sit there with your friends, and you always fight with your friends about who gets the crust pieces I and who's got to eat the middle piece. <laughs> and then, and then, see, I'm a crust guy. I gotta have the the one out on the outside. The crust, I love the crust piece, especially. The tiniest, smallest little triangle that's kind yes. of burned a little, that's killer. But you're an inside guy. You want the, the cheese on all Father, around it? Father and son used to put so much sausage and uh -huh. green peppers. It was all the, it was in the center, you know, so <laughs> you go for the center, work your yeah. way out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man, that's, uh, I, for, I always cut my pizzas that way anyway. And it wasn't <laughs> greasy. It was a good pizza. It wasn't greasy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert Niesler, Mama Luna's Pizza. Great. That's good. Uh, Carl Foster. Did the mob avoid donut joints because of the police? I don't know. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting question, Carl. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, hey, Pete Lodato, thank you very much. 
and uh appreciate you guys hanging out uh we're we're almost an hour in red um I, and I want to wrap it up in the next 10 minutes. Does anybody have any questions or want to go in a direction here? Or uh, because we'll we'll answer it if you guys have it. And if it's on the subject of uh, if it's on the subject of Marilyn Monroe and all, uh, that would be um, you should read the book Crypt 33. Yeah, Crypt 33 is the one. And what's the other one? Double Crossed is the other. Double really Crossed good book is on- not as accurate as Crypt 33. Crypt 33 spells it out exactly. I believe it's on page 278, 279, yeah. 280. Okay. I, I'm going to get it and read it. I'm, I'm, I'm it was almost... actually the story given to Milo Spilegro by uh-huh. um, Eugenia Pappas' uh, brother. Okay. He was a Chicago police officer. Hmm. He was angry that they got away with it. I'm 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 sorry. I'm just looking around here, and I just realized that I didn't bring it up here. I was sitting downstairs reading it, uh, but I wanted to let all of you guys know. Uh, one Frank uh, Colada's cookbook is out. It is available. You guys can go to Amazon and get it. Also. Uh, if you've been watching this channel and sticking with the channel, you recall David Bowman, who claims that he stole $100,000 in cash and uh, drugs from Frank Collada's house, which which actually happened, according to Frank, even according to uh, uh, other people that were there. That, that It's not hearsay. Yeah, it's not hearsay. This actually took place. And then he went out on the run doing all the drugs and and then planned on killing Tony Spilatro and Frank so that he wouldn't get in trouble for doing all of this. Anyway, his book, uh, Bringing Down Colada, just released. I just got my copy yesterday in the mail from wow. the publisher. And uh, although I've read the, I've read it already um, before it went Did to- Did he wrote that, didn't he? I, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Denny was involved with it. Yes, with him. Yes, he was. And I'm just, I'm, I don't want to get things confused there either with Denny because I just read about him yesterday in Ori Spado's book, Accidental Gangster. Ori's been on here before and uh, his, uh, I'm, I'm just almost finished with his book, but I didn't know. He knew Denny way back in the day when they were, you know, uh, damn near teenagers. So Denny Griffin and Ori Spado. So when they were in the service together, so interesting stuff, but okay uh red did you ever go down to hollywood florida with frank schweiss chad blocklinger wants to know with frank schweiss never mm-hmm. <laughs> i never got in a car with frank schweiss okay if it was t- if he said come on let's go someplace i said i'm in my pajamas i'm in my robe i'm not going anywhere hey said my partner lenny okay um, i wouldn't get in a car with that guy <laughs> Um, hmm. I don't well, blame you for what he you... said to me. One of the first things he said to me, he says, You know, my reputation, and I said, Yeah, I know your reputation, right? That was one of the first things he said to me. After that, I was kind of shy about going places with him. <laughs> Cindy said she uh, lived in Logan Square and ate at Father's Son. Said it was delicious. It was. It was great. I'm not familiar with it, but Red is, and so is Cindy. Well, so. It's Northside. It's Northside. Hey, Don Berlin. Do you remember Adolph's at Rush Street, formerly owned by Fortune Renucci? My yes. father bought his restaurant and ultimately sold it in 77 before he passed away. Great restaurant, sad ending. You remember it, huh, Red? I do. I ate there. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, uh, let's see a couple other questions here. He's saying out on Rush Street, occasionally. Ask Red, why didn't you become a law enforcement officer? I had a lot, <laughs> I had a lot of uh, criticism from different agents that said that I was a frustrated uh, cop. Mm-hmm. I should have become a law enforcement officer. Why I didn't? I didn't want to go on domestic calls and get shot. <laughs> I didn't want to go on traffic stop. I just didn't like the routine of being a police officer. I wanted to be in my own business. 
I didn't want to be owned by somebody else. You, you not even the guy owned me. Yeah, you were an entrepreneur. You yes. like to yeah. It's like me. I'll work 150 hours a week, so I don't have to work 40 hours for somebody else. That's just me, though. I don't. I don't. Uh, I've always been that way. I've just built that way, I guess. Plus, you but, get uh, out of it what you put into it, rather than getting a paycheck that's nothing, and you're paying somebody else's salary. Well, no, that's that's. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's. Um, I don't know. I had a job in a machine shop for eight months. Uh, it was over there in Cicero. Uh, at the time, it was called uh, Jomar and Jomar Industries. And uh, it was based in Lansing, but then they moved their factory out to Cicero and, or Alsip. Sorry, not Cicero, Alsip. And I stood there and it was like, pick up the part, D Burr, set it over there. Pick up the part, D Burr, set it over there. Pick up the part, D Burr, I, you know. And, and, and at the end of the day, at the end of the week, I'm like going, you know, I stood here and did meaningless uh, task, but not that, not that, hey, and I'm not putting anybody down who may do that, okay? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that that job or that particular type of work isn't for me. Just like there's guys who sit in a truck all day and drive back and forth across the country by themselves, certain individuals are built for certain jobs. I'm just not... I'm not built like that. So can I'll I tell be... you something funny? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, I only lasted three months. I was <laughs> at uh, wire sales at 55th and Knox. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was living at 3840 West 63rd place in clearing. Mm -hmm. I went to the job and all my job was is these the things that go underground the uh, for posts, they're metal and right. they go through this machine. And I had a paint sprayer. And all I did was do this. It was on a, a conveyor. And they go right. by and paint them, go by, paint them, go by. And it was a union job. So you had, you had a boss there. And yeah. so it was a stand-up job. Well, I saw a stool over on the side. And they sat down the stool. And I was doing it. They fired me because he said this is a stand-up job. But it was boring. My Eight job. hours. Just yeah. Yeah. I, I, one yeah. I didn't even count them anymore. It was like counting sheep in the beginning. How many did I do today? You know? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, Will, Will Guajardo. Uh, Red, were you ever surprised when you heard certain me uh, outfit members got whacked or seen new news coverage of them on the news? Always. Always. Always, Always surprised. Upset and surprised. Jeez. Wow. I always wondered why and usually figured it out or ask somebody or listen, listen right. to something, why they got murdered. Hey, Mickey, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. I don't know. It's Wednesday. Wednesday, we got Red Wimet. It's uh, it's like it's a Wimet Wednesday. <laughs> uh, we, we met, sorry, we met Wednesday. We met, not Wimet. We met. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll do another one next Wednesday. Uh, as long as nothing comes up. And I don't uh, end up taking some people out in the afternoon, some of my friends that come to town and, you know, want to be shown around. They call me and I do that sometimes. So, uh, okay, this was, I'm going to do two more questions because I passed them up. Uh, Outfit Boss, Red, do you have any Joe Ferriola stories? Only one story, and, and that was guys that used to go out and see him. And Schweiss told me this himself. He needed a heart transplant. And he used to ask everybody when they came out, what they'd ask other, he would ask somebody that worked for him. And he used to ask him, what type of blood does he have? <laughs> and I always used to say, yeah, right. Like you're going to give him his type of blood. And everybody knew what type of blood he had. <laughs> uh, Robert uh, Nestler, Niesler. Uh, Red, did you know the 14th precinct cop named Greco? No. I, you know, that I name, I have. I from the newspapers, but I did not know him. Th there was a candy store in Calumet City called Greco Nut and Candy or something when I was a kid. And I, I, I don't know if that had anything to do with anything, but I haven't heard that name since I was a kid, Greco. And I just, it just I believe that was memory. the Shakespeare district, wasn't it? 14? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, Luminous Grin. Redness Day. <laughs> Redness Day <laughs> instead of Wednesday. John O, where did all the mob money go? Are there still legitimate businesses with their families own uh, cash and overseas accounts, basements, hundreds of millions over the decades? Where did it go? Well, obviously, it went into legitimate businesses. That's what Ricardo did with his money. Um, well, possibly that's what happened to it. Well, um, it all got funneled off into legitimate businesses. They got tired of the IRS, you know. They were sitting on all this cash for years, and they were all going to jail. Who wasn't indicted on by IRS? Even a cardo was brought in. Everybody was brought in I, IRS. Yeah. It was the I, catch. -all. That's what they got Al Capone on. So, you know. Anyhow, uh, okay, Herbert, I just posted the link to that other uh, video I was talking about earlier where I interviewed Jack Hayden, who was friends with Peter Lawford and Lucille Ball, and it was it's a fun interview. So if you guys want to check it out, check it out. I'll put it in the description after this video is finished. Royal, how you doing, Royal? Royal Jenner, or Jenner is how it's pronounced in German. How you doing, Royal? Uh, he's uh, He's my friend for like, 35 years or something. I've known him. I've known him a long, long time. How you and doing, Royal? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go get jump in VR as soon as I get done with this broadcast. We're gonna jump in VR and we're gonna shoot some arrows at uh, goblins. So that's the <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the new thing to do to to relax and unwind. Anyways, guys, thanks so much, everybody. Please hit that like button, like it, share, prescribe. If you haven't prescribed yet, be sure to do that. That button's down at the bottom. If you're new here and you think I'm saying this incorrectly, no, it's prescribe. You guys are prescribers. That's how we're gonna keep this channel, okay? Just like we're gonna keep the, whoop, we're gonna keep that little logo up there the same, that caricature of Frank, that's gonna be the logo for Mob Vlog from now on. So. My channel's a subscribe. <laughs> there you go. Be sure to go to Red's channel too, guys, and listen to his bedtime stories. He has all these short stories and uh, they're, that are all about Chicago outfit guys. And it's uh, they're pretty fascinating. He is actually, uh, Red's getting his channel up there and Red, you're up to 852. And here is a link to his channel. If you guys want to go check out his content, you can do that right there on that link that I just shared in the comments on the side. Uh, Herbert Arnold, you're very welcome. I, uh, I any Anything for you, man. Uh, thanks, Tony Montana. Glad that you enjoyed this uh, afternoon. The Shakespeare District is where Ron Dean, who turned actor, kill, killed Kill the Cop by the name of Albert Brown in 1957, Bob said. I don't That's know anything about that. That's an old one. Is that an old one? Yeah. Uh, Will Moose, quickly, do Chicago outfit guys consider themselves to be Cosa Nostra? No. It was never, that word was never mentioned, and they never mentioned the word mafia. They just said outfit or connected. Gotcha. Um, it wasn't like New York. It wasn't like uh, Detroit. It wasn't like the East Coast, Cleveland, okay. whatever. It was uh, totally uh, different. Right. Even like Tampa, Florida, they said mafia down there. Right. Um, totally different. The outfit was just Chicago. And okay. I think the original person that coined it that was Al Capone. He, he talked about his guys, the outfit. And that's how it got the original moniker that's interesting i always wondered how that uh how it became known as the, the outfit that's, well when he uh, talked to people in new york he used to say my outfit my outfit my like outfit, gotcha. almost like the military my mm -hmm. outfit i was you know that's right where... right which outfit are you in awesome uh okay so guys um quickly last announcement and then we're going to wrap this wrap this up I am posting right now in the comments a link. This link is to a playlist. This link is also going to be in the description of the video. You can click the link and it is 
all 100 episodes of Coffee with Colada, and they're numbered 1 through 100 in the order of the production date. So and they're guys, very interesting. If, if you guys they are just, just keep on going, the next one, the next one, they're very interesting. If you guys are just finding this channel, uh, go check out the playlist, learn who Frank Collada was, and you can watch through all 100 episodes that are uh, with Frank or about Frank. So uh, that is posted right now in the comments. You guys can go there. Once again, it'll be in the description as well. Um, anyhow, we're going to wrap it up. So thank you very much, Red, once again for coming on. Uh, and thank all of you listeners and viewers for watching this and thank you guys also for all the encouragement in the comments because what i'm trying to do i've not watched somebody else do uh so i'm i'm kind of making this up as i go along and i'm glad that you guys are enjoying this i really <laughs> seriously because I, i'm i'm just trying to lay it out there as honestly and as you know as as real as i possibly can to you guys and i want to give you guys that kind of content so if you guys uh want to hear more interviews from other fantastically uh, interesting historically knowledgeable and have historic value um come come check it out uh i talked with uh i talked with gary jenkins who i'm going to, to do an interview with great later guy. in the month gary's uh, a great guy red's red's been uh, done some things with him in the past as well and it's been uh yeah we're gonna have fun with this i'm also going to take you guys on adventures uh around uh, las vegas and other cities so you guys can uh see um different places uh and i'll take you guys exploring with me so if that sounds like your kind of content hit the prescribe button down below and i'm going to put right here uh yeah royal there are still mugs available if you guys do want a coffee with colada mug um, there's Colada Crew Forevers. There's other mugs. Just look down below in the video, and you can, uh, you guys can find those. Here's the link, guys. That's a playlist called Mob Vlog Exploring Vegas. We go to where the plane landed on the golf course in real life. We go to the Flamingo. Uh, we did a video on Piero's restaurant. I took you guys out to where the lefty's car was bombed one day. So there's gonna be other things happening. And uh, anyway, one last time. Uh, thank you all for watching and Red, thank you very much for, uh, for being here, uh, for, for all of us. You're welcome, Adam. And you're welcome guys who's ever watching. I don't know how many people are watching. <laughs> I, I actually, we, we tipped the scale here. We, we, uh, we broke a hundred. I think we broke 110 actually today, concurrent viewers, which is, which is great. I mean, it's great. Thank you guys all for, uh, for participating and, uh, we will see you guys next time. Have a great day, guys. God bless. You've watched Mob Vlog.